Good day, students, and welcome to part two of the Integrated Algebra Regents exam for June 2013. We're going to be going over questions 6 through 10 um, in this installment. All right, let's take a look at question number six. It says the roots of uh, a quadratic equation can be found using the graph below. So the question says, what are the roots of the equation? So um, you can imagine uh, this to be the ground level, the x-axis. So the point where the graph intersects the x-axis, so the x-intercepts are known as the roots, okay? So your roots are basically um, the same thing as your, your x-intercepts, all right? Don't confuse it with your y-intercepts, okay? Your x-intercepts are the roots. So where does this graph intercept the x-axis? So you intercept the x-axis at this point and at this point. So we have negative 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1 and 4. So your roots are negative 1 and 4. Remember, uh, this value right here, 1, 2, 3, negative 4, uh, is not, does not qualify as a root. It is a y-intercept. The y-intercept is not a root. So don't get tempted to pick option number 4. That's wrong. The correct uh, answer is option number three. Okay? All right. Okay, let's take a look at question seven. It says if the area of a rectangle is represented by x squared plus 8x plus 15 and its length is rep represented by x plus 5, uh, which expression represents the width of the rectangle? So we know if we have, let's say we have a rectangle, okay? Uh, the dimensions. The formula for area is length times width, right? So this is the area right here, and um, this is the length, and this is the width. The area is basically length times width, right? So we are told that this area value is given by the polynomial expression x squared plus 8x plus 15. And you're also informed that uh, the length is x plus 5. So the question is, x plus 5 multiplied by what would give us x plus 8x plus 15? x squared plus 8x plus 15. Basically, what's the width? Now, there are two ways we can do this. We can factor um, this expression uh, to get the two factors that multiply to get this, or we can divide uh, this expression by the length to get the width. All right, so we're going to use both methods, and then whichever method you prefer, you can use, okay? All right, so method one is factoring. All right, method one, we're going to use factoring. Uh, so we're going to factor the expression x squared plus 8x plus 15 as a quadratic trinomial, okay? So we're going to use the x game, or the ac method. ac is 15, and b is 8. Because a is 1, b is 8, c is 15, a times c is 15, b is 8, okay? All right, so what two numbers multiply to give you 15 and add to give you 8? 3 times 5 works perfectly for this. So we have x squared x square plus 3x plus 5x plus 15. All right, so what we're going to do now is factor by grouping, okay? So from the first two, I can take out, let me break it down to center so you can see what I'm doing here. Break it down to center. All right, and then we're going to factor by grouping, okay? So uh, from the first two, I can take out an x and next, I'm left with x plus 3. And then from the next 2, I'll pick out the 5. And I'm left with x plus 3. So our factored form is x plus 3 times x plus 5. Okay? So you notice one of our factors is x plus 5. So the other factor, x plus 3, has to be the width, x plus 3. So you can clearly see that our answer is option number 1. Okay? All right, let's do another method. How about we do the long division method? Uh, method two, method two, long division, okay? All right, so uh, since we multiply these two to get that, we divide this uh, by this uh, length right here, we should get the width, okay? So uh, let's see, long division, we're going to divide, let's, let's draw long division bars for this. This is gonna divide uh, trinomial by a binomial. So um, 8x squared plus 8x plus 15. Uh, and then we 
divide into by x plus 5. All right, so whatever we get, that will be the width. All right, so how do we do this? x goes into x squared how many times? x times, because x times x is x squared. And I distribute x to 5, so it's 5x. All right, now we just subtract. Subtract that, and we subtract. This goes to 0. 8 minus 5 is 3x plus 15. You drop that down. All right, now how many times does x go into 3x? x goes into 3x three times, so 3 times x, 3x, 3 times 5, 15. Subtract again, and your final answer is 0, okay? All right, you can clearly see that x plus 3 is our answer again. So whichever method you like, um, either long division or factoring, uh, both will give you uh, the desired result, okay? So that's that. All right, let's move on to question number 8. All right, so question A says, which of the data set, which of the, which of, which set of data describes a situation that will be classified as qualitative? Okay, so qualitative basically refers to uh, the description of, of properties, like the properties of, of, um, of objects in a set. Um, qualitative basically is a non-numerical type of description. Okay, so if you think about quality, quality, you think about non-numerical uh, descriptors, okay? All right, so basically things that you cannot assign, you cannot assign a, a numerical value, a value to, okay? That you can just use words to describe the quality. So for example, if someone is thin um, or or, or, or fat, you know, you can't put numbers to that. You know, it basically has to do with appearance. But if you think about someone's weight or height, those, those are numerical descriptors, but qualitative involves non-numerical descriptors, okay? So any quality of the data set that we can put a sign ascribe a numerical value to is quantitative, it's not qualitative, all right? So let's look at this, data, this right here. The colors of the birds at the zoo. Can you put a number on the color? No, your colors are uh, like blue, green, yellow, they're descriptive, and they're non-numerical. So this is a perfect uh, candidate for qualitative uh, um, classification of elements of a, of a set. Shoe size, shoe size, like size 10, 11, whatever, those are numbers, numerical descriptors. Heights, can you put a number to a height, 5 feet, 8 feet? Yes, you can put a number to a height, so it's not qualitative because it's numerical weight. Can you assign a numerical value to the weight of, of an object? Yes, you can. So the other three, we can clearly see that they are numerical descriptors, so they do not qualify as quantitative. These are quantitative classifications, quantitative, okay? But what we need is qualitative, and this is qualitative right here. All right, so our answer um, is option one. Okay, now number nine. We are asked to find the value of the expression 6 factorial plus 5 factorial times 3 factorial over 4 factorial minus 10. We can do this by hand, or we can put this in a calculator. I think this is a good um, uh, assessment of how good we are at um, grouping expressions uh, in our calculators. Okay, so you can put the whole thing in the calculator at once, or you can uh, compute them individually and then put your resulting answer uh, into the calculator. So, uh, in order to avoid making mistakes, I'm going to do um, each, each one independently and then put all the answers together. All right, so my calculator, I'm going to first of all compute 6 factorial and then the term in the center, 5 factorial times 3 factorial over 4 factorial. I'll compute what that is. And then we know what 10 is. And then I'm going to just put the answers together and evaluate the expression. All right, so that was my calculator. So we want to start out with six factorial, six. And um, if you go to the catalog, you can find all your uh, operators there. Um, so I'm going to go to catalog, which is second function zero, uh, and scroll up to see where's the factorial symbol. There's another way to figure it out, but this is the one I always use. I like to use uh, the catalog. So there goes the factorial symbol right there. So six factorial, enter is 720. All right, so 6 factorial is 720. Let's write that down. 720. Now, this is a complicated expression to enter. You have to be really careful while entering this so you do not have a grouping error, okay? 
So parenthesis, since you have two terms in the top, five catalog. I'm going to go to Z because I know it's right next to Z. Where's my Z at? Uh, w, X, Y, Z. And put down. Okay, there you go. So, uh, 5 factorial times 3 catalog. Go up to factorial. Where are you, factorial? There you are. All right, divided by factorial okay there's another way you can find factorial other than go to catalog you can go to math and then scroll to probability and then option four that's another way of finding it anyway they have it so it's 30 720 uh, for the first one the second one is 30 okay so what are we computing now we're gonna find six factorial is 720 plus 5 factorial times 3 factorial over 4 factorial is 30 minus 10. We can even do this mentally, right? Um, 720 plus 3750 minus 10. Um, your answer is 740. And we can clearly see that option 3 uh, is our correct answer here. Okay? All right. Let's move on to question number 10. Uh, question 10, it says, which... Uh, Notation represents this inequality notation. Okay, so uh, let's just go re do a real quick review. Uh, if you have less than, that's represented by a parenthesis. If you have less than or equal to, we have a bracket. Okay, we have greater than, it's represented by a parenthesis in the other direction. Um, and then greater than or equal to, we have a bracket right there. Okay. So basically, this is basically how you group it. So we, what we have here is we have, um, let me pause that. Yeah, well, it depends on the direction. So you can all, you can group these together. So if you have, let's do it like this. So if from the left end, this is what applies, and then from the right end, the other, the other uh, situation applies too. So if it's from the, if it's from the right, this is, I mean, this is from the left. This applies from the left or the lower bound, left side, and then from the right, it's like this and like that. Okay, this is from the right. Depends on the direction, directionality. All right, so here um, we're going from negative three all the way to three. Okay, so those lines basically means that these numbers are included. So inclusion basically means bracket. So you have a bracket here. And then you have a bracket here. Okay? If there are no lines there, then it will be parentheses. All right. So this is basically the representation for this interval. Negative three to three. Answer is option number one. All right. So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking here so you can get uh, updates to other installments of this uh, review series and please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. Well, keep coming to find on my best Thanks again and have a wonderful day.